Welcome to A Teaspoon of Healing, where we explore the pathways to wellness and vibrant living. Listen to personal stories of healing and interviews with experts. It's time to open a doorway to healing in your life through positive changes. Here is your host, Dawn Damari. Hi, I'm Dawn Damari, and you're listening to A Teaspoon of Healing. Today, my guest is Barbara Bustard. She is a teaching artist, and she wrote a chapter in a book called The Ultimate Guide to Self-Healing Techniques, compiled by a previous guest on this show, Laura DeFranco. So Barbara wrote the chapter about healing through art therapy. So hi, Barbara. Well, hi, Dawn. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining me on the show. So art therapy, this is something that I've been really intrigued by, and I, I you know, creativity and self-healing. So how long have you been an artist? Oh, gee, from childhood, but um, teaching and doing it most as a profession, but not necessarily full time, uh, at least 30 years. Oh, nice. And when you say you're a teaching artist, is it more that you are you're giving art instruction in schools or are you just are you teaching privately or is it? Maybe explain what what a difference between an art teacher is and a teaching artist. Okay, okay. So a teaching artist is the term used for um, artists who actually, I guess, I do go into schools through different nonprofit programs and after school programs, and so artists that do that type of thing but are not certified, or I guess, for, uh, to be a school art teacher are known as teaching okay. artists and artists that will go in and teach things in, in groups. And so I work with art with a heart and with bright starts, which is a program through Baltimore city here in Maryland goes into the public schools and has like an artist in residence for a while that does a specific program or runs an after school uh, session for like six weeks and things like that. Art with a heart works with, elderly in um, senior housing as well as preschool and in the city schools doing art to get people to be able to experience art and schools don't have such a great program anymore so (laughs) we go in and nice and help out it seems you are in on the east coast are you you're in maryland correct so how did you get connected with laura defranco so you could contribute to the to this book Okay, I am a member of On Purpose Women, which is a group uh, that Jenny Robertson started mainly on around the Baltimore, Washington, Virginia, Pennsylvania, East area. It's a monthly women's group that meets to help and support other women. You don't have to be an entrepreneur, but most of them are. It's just a woman's group to help and support and let people know what you're doing and give hints and things each month someone will be a speaker to explain what they do or give you a tool to use or so anyway uh, Laura DeFranco is also a member of that group and evidently she this book came together in five weeks from conception to publication (laughs) she got up in March one day it was shortly after the quarantine started here and said you know, she really had this passion to put this book together. So she contacted some people and she asked, you know, she wanted to do this and who would want to contribute a chapter who was a expert in different healing modalities. And a member of the group said, well, you need to get Barbara Bustard in here for the art part. And so she contacted me and asked if I would do it. And I said, sure. Nice. And so how can somebody heal through art therapy what is some for somebody who is not creative or doesn't consider themselves creative because i don't like to use that word i think i think we're all creative in our own way everyone is creative i have that all the time and i'm and i tell people you are creative you don't we aren't talking about being a master here we aren't talking about having your work in museums Mm -hmm. everybody is creative you have a creative spirit in you and art actually allows you 
to express your thoughts and emotions that sometimes you can't put into words. But if you start like even just doodling or making colors, your mind is freed up to not be focused on whatever is bothering you at the time. And you get insight. It just like happens because your mind is free. It also lowers your stress and your anxiety. It will um, shift your well, like shift your focus from the pain. Um, if you're ill, it takes your mind off of that. And and just doing something creative raises your dopamine. It creates dopamine, and dopamine, of course, improves your mood and gives you a feeling of well being. Um, the other thing that art does is doing anything creative opens new neural pathways in your brain. Every time you do something new and creative, those pathways open up. And the more they open up, the better your brain can function. And it helps even like children. They can be better focused. They can um, be not like so hyperactive. They, They can work out different ways to solve problems. It's uh, people just don't realize how beneficial art is. And art just means taking a paintbrush and putting paint on the paper, putting colors out there. Like I said, doodling, uh, working in clay, grabbing things and just building something just for fun to see what you can come up with. It, It inspires inventiveness and it also helps you cope with grief and loss. It, it can even, like, you can find meaning in, in experiences by just stopping the world that you're in normally and just starting to put color on paper or to doodle or to take a pencil and draw or whatever, make something. It helps you, as I said before, it frees your mind and relaxes your mind so that you can actually get decisions that you had trouble making or get clarity on a situation or work through grief or pain. It's just amazing. So right now we're many people around the world were, you know, going through something unprecedented and there's a lot of uncertainty about the pandemic. Are they going to get sick? Is a family member going to get sick? Uh, Are they going to lose everything they've worked for. There's just a lot of, there's a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. How can being creative Mm -hmm. and creating art help somebody manage this uncertainty and stress? Right. Well, again, just the act of doing it takes your mind off of all the stressors around you and your, your mind again, relaxes. There's no other way to say it. It just frees up your mind. I mean, in the beginning, you might have all these thoughts go through, but as you keep going with your paint or your pen or working in, you know, clay with your hands, you'll just get into a calm. And the, then the thoughts that start going through your mind actually help you and clear your head and, and just the dopamine is released, stress is easier on you. It just, it's a brief, you know, however long you do it, but you can go back to it. It's something you can do every day. And especially I combine art with meditation. So you go into the making of the art after having a meditation that has just calmed your whole body down and freed your imagination or your creativity what would be something you would suggest to somebody who's just getting started? I want to explore their creativity. They have some time during this quarantine and they want to do this. What are the first steps that somebody could do to get started creating something? Just pick up a pen and a piece of paper and doodle. You'd okay. be surprised how beneficial doodling is. Just start making marks, make hash marks, make curly cues, just make everything connect it all together. Just doodle. That's the easiest thing for people to do. And it's actually very beneficial. And not worry about what it's going to look like. It doesn't, you never worry art. This is not art. Like I said, that's going to be, there's no judgment in this art. This is art from meditation. It's your spirit moving through you. It's your soul telling you 
this is what I need. I need, I need to relax. I need to have a calm pace. I need to just forget about things for a while. And just taking a pen and doodling is very relaxing. And so starting out with that and how can people explore, explore their psyche, explore themselves and what needs to be healed through this? Okay, well, like I said, I always, when I'm doing an art type, a therapy type art session, we start with a meditation, take in, you know, start sitting comfortably, take in three deep cleansing breaths, and just relax. When I, the uh, particular project that I talk about in the Ultimate Guide to Self Healing Techniques involves clay and the meditation starts you're sitting with the holding a clay ball in your hands and we start at your feet and you just work your way up releasing all the tension all the way up from your feet to the legs to the thighs up the back up the neck through the head down through the eyes the nose the mouth the shoulders down your arms and you end with the clay in your hands and in that process with your eyes still closed you begin to form Uh, the beginning of the project, which is a meditation ball. So doing that, when you come out of that, you're very relaxed. The other thing is you can just pick up a, picking up a paintbrush actually triggers imagination in your brain, believe it or not. All you have to do is pick it up and your brain starts to imagine things. And like I said, it doesn't matter what you do. Just being creative reduces your anxiety levels. So you can write. Writing is, a, is a, an art form. I focus on visual arts, but I also do writing. And that's a great stress release and a great f- way to express yourself. You just write without any judgment, no filters. Just start writing. And it's only for you. It, nobody sees it. You can just write whatever just comes through your mind. Just write it, write it, write it. It doesn't have to be all about one thing. It's just any thoughts. Just write for like three minutes. Okay. And what about yourself? Any uncomfortable feelings come up during this? What do you suggest? When you're meditating and you and these things come up, just let them. It's hard. You get used to it. It takes practice meditating, but you just let it go through your brain. You acknowledge it. It's there and just let it pass and go back to focusing what you're doing. One of the things that I do is if you want to deal with something that is uncomfortable, a great thing is a painted prayer or a painted meditation. And I have a whole process. I do that. I actually have an entire prayer journal where every morning I do one and I choose what it is that this meditation or prayer is that's going out to the universe. And in the center of what I'm doing I write that word or that whatever, if it's something that's really pressing on my mind or it's pain that I want to be healed from, or I have discernment issues, I'm trying to figure out if I should do this or do that. I put that in the center of what I'm doing. Now you can do this just even with doodling, just make a circle and put whatever it is in the center and then just start doodling out from it. So that thought that you're worried is going to come through your mind and upset you is there in front of you. It's in the center of the circle. Those words are there. So you can be focused on putting that out and trying to let your spirit tell you what to do about it or help you with the pain. And just doing that and then just doodling, you begin to just be focusing on the doodling or if you're doing the whole process that I describe. Um, Then the thoughts that come through are more about how to heal this situation, what you need, why you feel this way. And so it gives you clarity. Okay. But how about in your own life, working with some clients, maybe describe changes you had seen in yourself by doing this or in someone else? Okay. Well, in the book, the particular thing, everyone in the, everyone or most of the, um, contributors to the ultimate guide share a personal experience that has led them to what they do. 
And mine, I told you, is about clay. And I can tell you, I, I mean, if you'd like, I'll read. I won't read. I won't share the whole story because then that gives it all away. But, <laughs> but I, will, I can give you an idea of where I was coming from and how I ended up working in clay. And this is part of my story. It's just like the middle section of it. So my childhood looked ideal to the outside world, but my adoptive mother was not at all nurturing or maternal, quite the opposite in fact. She was physically, verbally, and emotionally abusive. I often wondered why God would allow children to be given to someone who clearly did not want children. My consolation would be to tell myself that my current situation must be better than it would have been. From childhood, I had an artist's spirit. I wrote poems. I carved a horse head in a discarded block of wood using a screwdriver and hammer. I always drew the pictures in the back of magazines to see if I would be accepted for mail order drawing lessons. I painted ceramics at the local shop. I have this vivid memory of one day in elementary school that lit a spark in me. I think it was a summer program, and the teacher showed me a potter's wheel. It was in a little alcove in the teacher's office. The moment I saw that potter's wheel and learned what could be created with it began my yearning to work in clay. That memory stayed with me for many years, and in my 30s, my yearning desire to learn the art of working in clay was realized. And I go on to explain a revelation that I had coming out of spiritual direction one day. And it was so vivid and healing that I immediately had to go home and make this clay meditation ball that I give the instructions for in my chap. So for me, art has always been, that's where I go. That's what I do when I need to figure something out or I'm in pain. I work it all out through art. I make collages. I, I look up words, like I'll Google a word, different expressions of pain or different expressions of loss, grief, whatever. And I'll get all these words that, and I'll just print them out and cut them out and put them in a collage. And doing that and just expressing it that way actually helps you heal from it. You start to feel better each time. Okay. Do you teach this to people in your community as well? Um, I'm assuming now through I do. Zoom, either, you know, through Zoom or, you know, eventually again in person. Yes, I am. I'm doing my, I do teach, I teach art lessons to homeschoolers and, and adults and preschoolers and everything. But I also am doing the meditation um, healing type art. And I do it right now through Zoom. And I am, um, and, and even through Zoom, I mean, it doesn't have to be in person. They still get the effect of it. And they'll, at the end, it's like, you know, I really needed this. This is just what I needed. It it really told me something. So when I try not to, you know, I don't delve into, well, what did it tell you? What is it? You know? <laughs> so the people can tell kind of, I guess, figure it out themselves. So if, <laughs> so you suggest if, yeah, so if somebody's really spinning and they're really, there's a lot of uncertainty and uh, mental health mm -hmm. is really, they're saying, you know, a huge tool on people's mental health. So anything people can do. So this is definitely another tool people can have. So just start, pick up a pen, start doodling, see what, what comes through it while you're meditating right. and then continue. It's a good way to start the day. I like to get up in the dark and if I've slept well enough to not be too tired to get up. And I just sit in the dark. I don't have anything on I only hear the birds. I like the quiet and the lights just starting. The sun's just starting to come up. And that's when I will pull out the prayer journal and I use watercolors and permanent extra fine Sharpie to do these mandalas or these painted prayers. And that's when I just form an intention or I may already know if something's been pressing on me that I want to discern or if I know someone who's sick or something in the world that's really, really bothered me, you know, that I have no, I always say with, with size too deep for words, things like that, that I just can't, there's nothing I can really do personally, but I just can't take the, the pain of it that I feel for what's happening. That's when I'll open the book. Well, I do it every morning, but open the book and make my 
circle and put in the atten- intention and then just go from there. And then I fill it with all these beautiful, bright colors. I'm a color person. And colors actually are so healing. Seeing color also boosts your mood. And so it's a daily meditation and practice to start that gives you a good start for the day and you don't you get rid of all you work out you know you purge any like stress or negativity whatever it is that's bothering you so that you start your day on an upbeat or relaxed even it doesn't have to be upbeat you just have to have equanimity not be you know way up here and way down below Mm -hmm. just kind of maintain calm and like and the other thing is color i was i was going to say i am i love color my house is i have turquoise walls red walls i have art floor to ceiling and i dress that way i have i have a friend who told me years ago she said you don't get dressed in the morning you put on a costume now she didn't mean halloween she meant you you know you really go all out but what I found doing that, for one thing, it makes me feel good. It boosts my mood. I just, it makes me happy. When I don't have my colors on and don't look all funky or whatever people, you know, think, mm-hmm. I don't feel as good. But I noticed when I would go out in these wild, colorful outfits, people would stop me and they'd say, oh my gosh, I love your outfit. You just made my day. And it wasn't me. I'm sure it was the color. Mm-hmm that brightened their day, lifted their spirit. So that's another thing. Just get out crayons or paints and just make color. It doesn't have to be anything. Make a curvy line on the paper that goes all around and crisscrosses and then color in all those sections with different colors. Nice. So color, starting your day, just picking up a pen to do it all. Anything mm-hmm. else you would suggest for people? Uh, who are, Say they've gotten past the doodling stage and they want to do a little more. Should they get some paints? Should they just uh, just start, you know, dabbling in in that, or just see where sure. their see where their interest lies? Yeah, lie I mean, you can clay. right. You can with the healing art. I'm not talking about like the art lessons where I'm teaching people to draw and teaching right. them to paint using all the rules and principles and elements because this is just coming from you, from your inside, from your spirit. Mm-hmm. And but you can do things that don't require that talent or skill or practice, if you want to make a self-portrait, take a photo of yourself and print it out and then cut that shape out of black or white paper. Just cut the shape of you. And so there you are. You don't have to draw yourself. And then fill it in with color, fill it in with words, fill it in with whatever speaks to you to do. You can make collage, find pictures, print them out collages with words and images just to express and if you sit long enough and just look the the creativity is going to get sparked the imagination is going to start and then you'll start just you know just begin just put something down on the paper have the supplies there and go with it do whatever comes to you if you want to paint just take the paint and of course you have to have a a drop cloth or whatever to do this (laughs) but Just just take the paintbrush, dip it in paint, and just flick it at the paper and just keep doing that with colors. And you end up with a really lovely, colorful painting. And you see all the color plus the flicking of your arm. Like, if you're mad, flick the paint. You know, that'll get some of the anger out. I mean, but do that outside because that's really messy. (laughs) What if somebody is already a working artist or they're, they're an artist? How can they adapt their art, especially during this time, to, to be more healing, to, for self-healing? Meditate before you do it. I do my art from meditation. Most of the art that I do that's my form of art comes from meditation. And then I will paint what came to me or what I felt. And a lot of images are being held in the hands of God or putting my hands out to the world or so I will draw hands and that, or I'll draw images of, you know, the human figure. I mean, they can, it can be as elaborate as people want. My um, 
so any artist can, you know, instead of just focusing on, on making this sculpture this way, if they, I'm sure most artists probably would be able to do it anyway, because I mean, I believe that art comes from spirit. So they have it within them to know what to do. Most artists find healing in creating their art. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wonderful. Now, how can people get in touch with you if they want to either have a zoom session with you or just, you know, talk to on the phone? How can people get in touch with you? They can email me at art for body, mind, and soul at gmail.com. They can friend me on Facebook. Those would probably be the best ways. Okay. So look you up on Facebook, Barbara Bustard, B-U-S-T-A-R-D. Yes. Sorry, I didn't, but did I say it right? I hope, no, it, that's it, right, Bustard. That's Bustard, funny. yeah, it does. When I see it, it makes me want to make it. A lot of easier. people do that. They go Bustard. Bustard. Yeah. Or Bustard. <laughs> yes. yes. Fine. And Fine. so they can look you up there. And this book will give them lots of different ways to deal with the current situation mm-hmm. because there's energy healing in it. There is, like I said, there's 25 different contributors. So there's ancestral clearing, essential oils, sound healing, motion release. There's yoga, myofacial release, spinal mobilization, trigger point release, acupressure, a simple meditation, which helps people who aren't used to meditating begin that that practice, journaling. Mindful eating, body awareness, breath work. There's 25 different practices that can be, you can take what you want and and begin those practices and doing them daily or weekly or whatever will will help. Mm -hmm. People are are liking it. The reviews, actually, I have a um, a part of a review from a clinical social worker in private practice. And she said, the personal stories make this an every person's book. It's easy to relate to each person's own healing journey in a way that inspires you to continue on your own journey, even when the going is hard or painful. Despite each of the writers being experts in their area, their stories are what makes this a very personal approach to presenting ways to support your healing journey. And then she says, each of the techniques is offered in a very simple to follow manner with step-by-step instructions and links to examples so you can see how to actually do some of the techniques. From physical to spiritual, artistic and mindful, this book embodies the mind-body connection approach to healing. She wrote actually a very long review, but that's Mm -hmm. brief. So it's a really good It's a toolkit. I think that's what we refer to it as. Mm -hmm. And it's available now on Amazon. Oh, okay. You can get the ebook or the paperback. Nice. And it'll definitely be something helpful for people right now. Yes, it will be. It's it's good timing. And I'm I'm personally working on it's funny because I had begun a book very similar to this about fifteen years ago, only mine dealt strictly with art and using it for healing and meditation. And of course it got sidelined, but being involved in this project made me go back and I'm hoping to finish it in within the next two months and have it out there as well. But mine will be like 25 art practices that people can do and, and incorporate into their daily life for healing. Nice. Well, thank you so much for joining me on A Teaspoon of Healing today. And is there anything you would like to add, Wisdom, you'd like to share to our listeners before we sign off? My only wisdom is be creative. It's so helpful in healing. It doesn't matter what you do. Just try something. And of course, if you want guidance, I'm here. Thank you for having me. Of course. And thank you so much. For being I on the show. It. And I appreciate what you're sharing. It's wonderful. And I know it's going to help Thank a lot of so people. Thank you so much, Dawn. Thank you. 
Susan, you remember the time we were in Orange County? We were driving around and we got lost. And we ran into this place called Avila's El Ranchito. You remember the place? The place had awesome decor and authentic margaritas. Did you know that Avila's El Ranchito has been around since 1966? They have 13 locations throughout Orange County. Visit Salvador Avila's location in Lake Forest and Foothill Ranch for great food, ambiance, and specialty margaritas. Thank you for listening to A Teaspoon of Healing with Dawn Damari, your home for wellness and vibrant living. For more resources on wellness and vibrant living, visit us online at teaspoonofhealing.com. This podcast is for informational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. Please consult a physician or other health professional before undertaking changes in lifestyle or wellness habits. The author claims no responsibility to any person or entity for any liability, loss, or damage caused or alleged to be caused directly or indirectly as a result of use, application, or interpretation of the information presented herein.